Welcome back, Vintage Gamers Saturday Challenge. Uh, I have been toiling over what I wanted to play today. Nothing has sparked the joy uh, recently. I, I'm hoping that the new one, one, what's it? Why is it? What, what is one? One will be all. All will be one. Once upon a time. Whatever one means. Uh, I'm hoping that the new one cards will be um, interesting and and at least let me build some cool new decks because I am so bored. Oh my god. I need a shake-up. Give me a shake-up. Uh, I did pull together a fun and interesting brew for us today. Um, it has been a while since we've played any uh, Displacer Kitten-centric decks. Obviously, Displacer Kitten is seeing play and success, I would say, uh, in Jewel Shops. But uh, all the Displacer Kitten builds ended up being just like a little short of playable. So here we are today with a new blue-white Tinker deck featuring all the Displacer Kitten combos. And the big change here is um, I'm going to try playing some White Plume Adventures. Should be a really powerful uh, early drop that gets value off of Displacer Kitten and helps in the mono-white matchup. Yes, I didn't put a lot of this in my board on purpose. I don't think it's necessary because you're going to try to combo with your Karn most of the time. Um, that's why there's like a Lotus Petal in my card. Um, so yeah, so the main combo is Teferi, Displacer Kitten, and a Moxin is, uh, infinite draws, and then if you have two Moxin, it's, like, infinite mana, or, it's been a long time since I played this deck, so we're gonna have to find the combos as we go. I think two Moxin is infinite mana, and then a Displacer Kitten, uh, or, um, two Moxin and Displacer Kitten is infinite mana, then, um, a Teferi and a Moxin is infinite draws, and also protects your combo, um, there's also, uh, Astrolabes to flicker and bounce, which will be fun. Astrolabe, a card that, uh, the Legacy decks don't get to play. We get to play a very solid, um, all basic, almost all basic mana base to go with our initiative and our Astrolabe, which is fun. Uh, I am playing a Spellseeker with some, uh, pointed tutor effects because we aren't playing black. There's a lot of cards in this deck that are missing that you could play in this deck. You could play one PO, you can play one Dig Through Time, you could play Merchant Scroll, you can play Demonic Tutor, you can play Vampiric Tutor. Um... In order to fit the cards that I wanted to try today, I had to make some cuts, and so I cut uh, the black part of this deck, and we're playing just blue-white. Um, I'm not saying that's the best way to do it, that's just the way we chose to do it today. Um, but yeah, so to make up for lack of tutors, we do have like a, a Spellseeker, and we can like tutor for some uh, pointed removal. We have a Mystical Tutor to point, uh, tutor for this kind of pointed removal spells. Um, and of course, there's another combo with Karn, and Displacer Kitten, and Lotus Petal, I think. I can't exactly remember what it is. It might be something like Karn gets Petal, Petal casts, Blinks Karn, make mana with Petal, uh, Blink, uh, uh, get Petal with Karn, infinite mana, something like that. I, I, I remember there being a specific reason for us to have a Lotus Petal or a Lion's Eye Diamond in the sideboard, and I think it's something to do with Karn. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, besides that, we're ready to go. It's vintage time. We have a round one matchup versus Vertex, so let's see what we can do. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. All right, so I lost five minutes on my clock to do that. Uh, sometimes you have to do such a thing. Uh, I am against Vertex, who is a Doomsday expert, though I don't know if they'll be on Doomsday today. Uh, this hand doesn't function, so we'll mulligan. We are going to have to play a little bit faster. This hand uh, does do the functioning, so we are going to keep. This hand does the functioning extremely well, actually. It almost does the functioning so well that we can play both of these cards on turn one, but we uh, we can't do that. So uh, I'm just going to put the Mana Vault back, and we'll just go for turn one Tinker and hope it, hope, it, hope it resolves. I think going for turn one Tinker is just better than, like, having more initiative value because... <sighs> I don't know. I just want the game to be over. <laughs> uh, I actually... No, I'm actually wrong here. Because if I... I guess I can tinker with... If I tinker then and it gets countered, um, we can't play our second card. So I guess I'm actually going to play the White Plume Adventure instead. Oh, they are on Doomsday, which is bad. This does at least let us, like, lost well into a Spell Pierce or something. 
or maybe we just get five or extra damage because they're on doomsday um i don't think it's worth it to get planes they're not going to really target our opal anyways or, or I guess for the same reason, I guess we should just get planes. All right, my opponent will probably think we're on mono white for what it's worth, just with an opal. I don't know if that helps us or not. That might just mean they kill us on turn one, but I am worried about getting turn one. But uh, I think it was worth it. <laughs> I lost well. I'm gonna lose well because I'm trying. Yes, Justin. Hello. I'm so smart. Probably. Uh, I can currently pay for Flusterstorm. Uh, okay. <laughs> My opponent just asked what <laughs> question mark in chat. <laughs> Spellbeer's looking slightly better. Yeah, true. All right, I have a Citadel. See what happens here. Oh, Time Walk's a good one. We actually are pretty close to Citadel victory here with a Stash. Getting us an extra token. How close are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pretty close. Oh, we bricked, but I think we shouldn't die. With misstep pierce force. And then we get another permanent with the catacombs next turn. I think I'm just going to pierce this. Maybe that's aggressive, but... How close are we to this Citadel? Two, four, six, eight. We need two, two non-land permanents. Ah, that's one. There we go. Uh, whatever. Technically, we're infinite here, but I don't think there's any reason to not just sack the board and kill them. Am I not at 10? 3, 6, 10. Ah. Oh. Okay. Uh, all right. We <laughs> cast the Tinker Magic Card, which, from what I know about Magic Cards, seems like a pretty good one. Let's bring in uh, Negations and Fluster and maybe the Surgical. And then take out um, Prismatic Ending, Repeal, Swords. I don't know if we want to keep a Swords in for, like, Shieldred. But we have Teferi, so probably not. Um, and then I think we can get rid of this Planes. I don't know if I... I the mana in this deck is really weird. Um, so I'm on 14. I think the right number might be 15. But we do have an Opal. And we have like uh, astrolabes and white plume adventures. So I trying. I'm trying fourteen. I don't know though. Um, I do think I'm gonna cut a planes still. I don't really see any reason for us to get a planes. And then a cat. Yeah, a cat could be right. A uh, mentor could be right actually. I typically don't really like mentor. Uh, no, I don't think surgical is, like, great or anything, but I don't, I also think it's, like, something. Whereas, I actually don't believe mentors should do anything, really. 
So I'm going to keep Surgical. I think I like Surgical more when you have Wasteland, but... All right, another hand with no mana. I did cut a Planes. Not that a Planes would save this hand. <laughs> uh, okay. I guess this could have technically been a Planes. I would have probably kept this hand if this was a Planes. I might keep this hand anyways. On six. Probably not. I think I would have kept this hand if this was a planes and just bottomed um like an Arset or a Teferi. But um I'm just gonna mulligan this hand. I think I can I can okay. <laughs> Keep that one and that one. If we just never play Displacer Kitten, our deck might be good. If we only cast Tinker all tournament. It seems like a possible place to win. That's a blue card for force, so that's something. All we need to do is hit a Moxon on the next turn, and then we have Tinker with Force Fluster. Hold the Tinker every game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, if this Spellseeker was an Ephemerate or a, a White Plume Adventure Slasher, then we wouldn't have had all these blue cards. No good. My opponent is uh is doing the way. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. I have two down basics in my deck. No, I meant the white I meant white plume adventure. Ah, fuck. Uh it's all it's all strategical placement here. We are dead. I mean we mulliganed and missed our mana. What do we want? What do you want from me? We mulliganed to five. If we had seven cards, this game would have been over. I think we're dead. Like, opponent's gonna have a seven card hand with infinite mana. <laughs> I mean, opponent, you know, didn't see any threat, so they get to, you know, sculpt their hand a little more. No reason not to. I kind of want to just let it resolve. I don't know. I feel like I'm not gonna win a fight over it. <laughs> roll the dice on their brain I don't know if I would typically choose to roll the dice on Vertex's brain I, I think they're pretty I mean I keep saying their name wrong right it's a Verdi, Verdi X whatever um, I think they're typically oh there's no cavern in Vintage Doomsday so no need to worry about that for the most part Vintage Doomsday doesn't really have to compete with hands full of counter magic and and for the most part, they just beat it anyway. So they're going to do a pass the turn pile. Uh, that's pretty smart. All right. Well, we didn't have to counter, you know, a Doomsday, so that was nice. We do need to hit our Moxen this turn, though. We did hit the Moxen. All right. We're off to the races. I could also spell seeker for Ancestral. I don't think that will work, but... Unfortunately, if I tap my Talarian, I am forced to use my Fluster... Ah, whatever. Who cares? Let's just tinker. All right, force. Um, force pitching force. Force pitching to fairy. Let's see what else they have. Tinker. Oh, okay, only one. It's kind of bad for me unless I hit blue mana. I did hit blue mana. Okay, I I hit exactly Tundra, so I can't even cast Astrolabe. <laughs> Please stop this nonsense. I have two. All right, whatever. It's fine. I bricked. Such is life. Gosh. 
Everything's bad. What? They're passing back? What happened, chat? What happened? Can we win the game? I mean, we can definitely win the game. We have a Citadel. Oh my god! <sighs> I think we have to go through this. I think we just have to go through this. I don't think that Fluster Fluster is going to be good enough. And we also have at least an Astrolog to draw through. Alright, Teferi is a great one, obviously. Kitten just wins the game on the spot, so that's pretty good too. Alright, well... 100% win rate against Doomsday. Oh my god. <laughs> How did we win? How did we win? Quick, someone cue the, the log quote. I don't understand. Okay, round two, Vintage Challenge. Opponent uh, is coming back to Vintage, and they have a Luris. So that could mean a uh, four-color Luris Deathrite Shaman. That could mean uh, Jeskai Luris, or it could be a Breach Luris deck. Again, my hand does not have a mana, um, which is like the third seven-card hand we've had without a mana, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we've been able to keep a seven yet, but it's okay, because we can London Mulligan for Tinker, so... Let's just mulligan. And we found Tinker. <laughs> Let's do keeps. Um, this is kind of interesting. I think I'm interested in keeping this opal, even though it's not currently turned on. Let's do that. Misty into... All right, so probably just Jeskai. That's a Ragavan. That's unfortunate. Don't really line up super well against Ragavan right now, but our deck does have a bunch of cards that Ragavan can't really hit well. Um, man. I'm not really sure the best way to play this out. I like to hold... I don't think I need to hold up Pierce Ancestral. I think I would rather just cast Astrolabe. Uh, if I hit a Moxin, obviously that's the nut high, because that lets me do everything I want. But I just don't think I'm ready to invest Ancestral, and I don't think holding up Pierce is good enough here. That's not very good. Uh, I'm probably supposed to play the Opal... Oh, I didn't... F3 in time. Uh, I think I'm probably supposed to play the Opal in case my opponent is on Lavinia, but it's not a huge deal either way. Uh, Yeah, this could go really badly for us. Let's see what happens. Things like Teferi off of this would be pretty uh, insulting for us. Things like Displacer Kitten. Things like White Plume Adventure. Uh, that does seem pretty bad. They go land White Plume here. They will tap them out, though, at least. My opponent's like, Astrolabe Island White Plume Adventure. I, the good news is we, didn't not, we did not want to draw White Plume Adventure, so Ragavan did help in that capacity. Uh. All right, so they do have a land. Are you going to play White Plume? Do they have a basic in their deck? All of these are questions. They have an underground sea. Okay, so they're actually on um, breach, probably. All right. So at least they're tapped out here. So if we draw a land, we can have Ancestral with Spell Pierce back up, which will be pretty good for us. Let's see if they have a basic island in their deck. They do have a basic island in their deck. Okay. All right, so I'm looking for land or Moxon.
I think we don't have enough lands in our deck, from what I can tell. <laughs> All right. Ancestral target me. I will force back up this if they counter it. I'm running really far behind my opponent, and they're going to actually start clocking me, which will make my Citadel a lot worse. So. I don't think our draws have been particularly good in this game. Gush in response? Menendian would not approve. I guess with a Ragavan, it's probably fine. I missed a land and Moxon? Um, I'm just so unlucky. Slasher, <laughs> why am I so unlucky? <laughs> uh, I just wish I had Slasher luck. Why? All right, well, I think we're going to lose this game. I don't think we could have ever won this game uh, based on our top five cards not being mana sources. I guess our top six cards weren't mana sources. They just hit my basic planes. I guess this game is still technically winnable. If we hit a Moxin and Tinker from 10 life, we could still go like Teferi into Displacer Kitten. So the game is not over. My opponent also has too many cards in their deck or in their hand. What is this? Is this a Shattering Spree? They have main deck shattering spree. Oh, they have a braid. Um, this is kind of interesting because I don't feel like I have a good way to win if I don't counter this. I guess I could hit mana crypt. I guess I could hit mana vault. I guess I could hit uh, minor misstep. I don't think it will even be good. I think people are vastly overestimating that card. All right, I think I can get rid of one force. It's probably fine. All right, so all I need to do is hit a Mox here, and then I have Tinker with Force Backup and 9 life. Is that good enough? Probably not, but it definitely has a, a chance to win the game, which is at least something. And we haven't hit any Mox in our lands before this, so... We hit a land. Uh, so... I can just bounce the Ragavan and go to four. Now, without Tinker, I won't even win. I needed to hit a Mox, right? I think this game was still super winnable, which is the really frustrating part. I guess we can still hit a Lotus. So I will just repeal the Ragavan now. I guess I could repeal the Opal. This repealing the opal doesn't net me any mana, but I could still hit Moxon too. So we'll just repeal the opal then. <sighs> it's so sad. Uh, my opponent's on the trap, right? So I am just dead on board. Uh, okay. I can still hit Lotus, I guess. Uh, I think it makes more sense to blind draw because blind draw lets me hit three outs. No, soul ring is not an out. It's just mana vault and mana vault and lotus. So I can spin and have three looks at lotus, or I can blind draw and have two hits. If this was a vamp, we could... I mean, vamping for Lotus here is, like, kind of nuts, too. All right, I'm just going to spin and look for Lotus. Okay. I have only eight life to win off of Tinker here. I'm actually going to Tinker off of Astrolabe because the Mox might be important to going infinite. Okay. Swords. Unfortunately, Swords is not enough because I need to take the initiative, but I, I don't have any more White Plume Adventures.
Yeah, we bricked off. It was pretty close, but I am actually dead on board still. I think losing this game is like severely unlucky. We drew seven cards, and we just needed to hit mana sources, and we drew no mana sources. It's kind of sad day. My opponent didn't even have counter magic for um for my stuff. Ah, uh, that's really sad. Okay. Yeah, losing that is really rough. Um, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I don't think we're gonna make any changes, are we? I guess we could theoretically play negations against a breach deck. Don't really like prismatic ending. Don't really like mystical tutor. Spell pierce is fine. Do I want fluster storms? Don't really know if I need fluster storms. Kind of don't want fluster storms. Let's just run like this. I guess I could bring Soul Guide Lantern in. That's probably actually a good one. Let's do that instead of Repeal. Yeah, I mean, we had we mulligan to a Tinker Hand that had Ancestral. That Ancestral resolved. But, um... We just had no mana sources. I think if our Ancestral hits Moxon, we're pretty much locked to win that game. But, all right, what do I have here? Uh, unfortunately, this hand is just a little too awkward with the Citadel and no other mana sources. So we're going to mulligan this hand. This one is probably fine. We're going to get rid of this Displacer Kitten. Uh, we're going to probe... Because I think the knowledge is worth it. My opponent has Time Walk, Preordain, Mystic Sanctuary, Red Blast, Ruby, Fetchland. I don't really feel like that's a very strong hand. But I also haven't hit... I think I just have to Brainstorm here. Uh, so we did hit... Mana. So at the very least, I'm just going to hold the pearl because of Spree and a Braid. At the very least, we can shuffle away the second White Plume if we want. I mean, we're going to. Or we, or if they, like, obviously, if they tap out, we can tinker them, but they're not going to tap out. I assume they're going to lead on Time Walk here. I guess uh, play around top deck Ragavan. I don't think you're allowed to do that because we're going to shuffle away the next card no matter what. I guess I could have put like the Displacer Kitten or something below it instead of the Tinker. I mean, I don't think I'm casting Tinker in this game, though. My opponent has a Red Elemental Blast in hand and a Ruby. I just don't think we're casting Tinker, so... And if they get to Tinker, it's not that big a deal. I think I would do the same pile again. I don't think it's that big a deal if they get Tinker, because I'm not casting Tinker this game. And what are they tinkering for? They're playing Luris. They don't have Citadel. They get Lotus, I guess. Which is fine. But Mystic Sanctuary, huh? I'm surprised my opponent didn't... I guess they have a Mystic Sanctuary. So they probably are priced into pre -ord... Wait, what did they draw? They drew Expressive Iteration. Okay. Well, the good news here is that this Expressive Iteration misses on a red source. I can probably just jam Tinker. The problem with jamming Tinker is, again, I'm not going to have the mana to, to play Magic the Gathering if I if I doesn't get doesn't resolve, right? Which feels really bad. They hit Blue to Delta, though. So now I don't have to worry about that. I am just going to slam my White Plume Adventure... Uh, and go get a basic planes. No, this does mean they get to just mystical for ancestral and then ancestral with mystic sanctuary though. So I mean, there are, there are problems here still. Um, not much I can really do about it though.
I do think I'm gonna get the basic planes. <sighs> yeah, you're gonna mystical in response, I guess. Sure. And this will just be ancestral. I think that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. Well, I have a white plume adventure, and I have tinkered pierce. If they like tap out too badly, I mean, they're going to have Ancestral probably into forces, so I don't know if that matters much either. I think we're probably just going to lose this game on card, card quality. My deck or the opponent's deck? My opponent is playing Breach. They have to play Underground Sea to play Lurus. My deck is blue-white. I should not have an underground C. If I have an underground C, it means Magic Online registered the wrong deck for me. Ah, okay. No, no, no. My opponent is on Breach. <sighs> yeah, I think losing game one was probably too much to come back from. Especially when our game two hand was not predict oh they just had the combo, man, that is just really brutal. I mean, whatever. My opponent just out out power leveled their cards on me by a lot here. Yep, I'm just dead. I, I mean. What am I going to do? My opponent had Ancestral, and then they drew into exactly Underworld Breach Black Lotus. There's really not much gameplay that I could have done on the in this one. My card, I, I can I need to probably keep a seven card hand. These six card hands are not doing it. Um, like I said, I think round one, game one, or sorry, round two, game one was just uh. A really unfortunate situation. Wow, we actually would have been able to tinker with Spell Pierce Force Backup. That would have been pretty strong. Yeah, not much to say. Um, like I said, I think game one, we need to be winning that game. And I think for the most part, like if you give me a random configuration of my deck... And the same cards in my hand. We should probably win that game most of the time. Uh, but we missed. And that happens. That's variance. That's magic. Okay, here we go. Round three. Vintage challenge. We're up against micrograms. Probably on Vine. A hand's pretty good against Vine. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I mean, Kane had a ton of vintage cube matches. It is better to be mo a modern player than a cube player in that event, so. So depending on how good my opponent's hand is, we can either go Mana Crypt Pearl, Mentor, Repeal, Pearl, Replay Pearl, or we can go Mana Crypt Mentor, uh, just Mystical Tutor. Depends on how many vines are attacking us, basically. Unfortunately, we don't have the Sphinx in our main, so we probably still have to, like, if we go Mystical Tutor, we probably still have to go, like... Tinker for Citadel. I guess we could technically go like time walk. We could go swords. We can go ending. Oh, my opponent is on dredge. That is so much worse for us than them being on cradle. Ah, uh, we're so doomed. Oh, maybe they don't have a force, or maybe their force is vigor. Unfortunately, Narsa is too late. All right, I am going to play the, the, the part, this first so I can, if they, I don't know what I can do. I think Dredge is insane right now. Dredge feels like the deck to beat. They have a force. Um, I think I'm going to repeal my Mana Crypt and try to hit a force. 
Because I can still Mystical Tinker. I just won't have a land drop to give. But I can maybe save life. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, Kitten could present some possibilities. I don't have a blue Moxin, though. All right, so my opponent has how many dredgers? They have dredged nine. Oh, they dredged for... Interesting. <laughs> I was wondering why they dredged on upkeep. It's because they had a grief... They had three cards in hand. It was blue card, force, and grief. So they dredged a, a black card and then grief me. I, this deck, I don't know. It just feels super unbeatable when... I mean, I guess it's game one against dredge, so... See what they do. Now they can take my mana crypt, which definitely leaves me with very few options, but maybe they'll take Mystical Tutor. Uh definitely am getting punished for bouncing back my mana crypt for what it's worth. That was seems like maybe I made a mistake. You could say that was maybe a mistake. I think I would just take mana crypt if I was them. I guess this like could also represent mystical ancestral, which is kind of scary, but okay, they took that. So I mean we have displacer kit in lines. If we can draw. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I think technically we have winning lines here. And my opponent has no more interaction. So this is our turn. Mo no, I so I, I very specifically bounced Mana Crypt because I wanted to save three life. I definitely thought three life would matter, especially if we were going to tinker for Crypt. Or tinker for um for Citadel. Now, what I could have done is not repealed in response and just held open Mystical. And when they griefed me, I could have Mysticaled for Tinker and, and I would have played around all of that. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know if it's correct to play around opponents' last two cards being Force Blue Card Grief. Or last three cards being Force Blue Card Grief. I felt like they had a Force. But it's also not clear if their Force is Vigor or, or Force of Will. Like, there's a lot of reasonable choices you can make there. And I feel like just we made a reasonable choice that got punished. Um, Are we dead on board? Uh, 4, 7, 10, 13. We're exactly dead on board. Um, I don't know if there's anything we can hit off of Narset that would give us an extra turn. And Displacer Kitten doesn't really help us pass this. And if they hit any Creeping Chill, we die. Displacer Kitten Block doesn't do much, um, but it does like mean they have to hit double chill. It actually only means it's actually only still only single chill because we have to we don't have to fetch, but we also could die to Mana Crypt. Um, but I'm gonna have to fetch because I need to play a Narset next turn anyways. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're dead on board. I think there's the likelihood we actually get a turn back is extremely low. I just don't think this hits anything that works, right? Okay, so what if I play Narset, and I hit Lotus, and then I play Kitten, and then I reset my Narset? I don't know. Let's just try it. Oh, Lotus doesn't even do it. I don't have enough mana. Okay, never mind. There's just no outs here. I did hit my infinite combo, uh, but I, I am dead, so. Uh... <laughs> Hmm. Dredge, man. All right. So against Dredge, we have uh, Needle Crypt, uh, Lantern, Tabernacle, Sphinx, Surgical, and Balance. And then we're going to take out Prismatic Ending, Repeal, uh, Volus's Citadel, Karn the Great Creator. We're going to take out White Plume Adventure. Um, and... We might as well bring in this pedal if we're not going to have Karn. And then, obviously, Flusterstorms are upgrades on Spell Pierce. And then... Mental Misstep can go. And that gives us... That's a pretty reasonable... That's pretty reasonable. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Our sideboard, you know, post board, we should be much better. We have a lot. We have a lot more good cards. Sure. All right. One serum powder, one mulligan. 
And a keep, so a six card keep from our opponent plus a powder hitting some vigors. Let's see what's in our opponent's hand. That'll let us choose how we need to play this. Opponent has Bazaar of Baghdad, second Bazaar of Baghdad, Force of Will, and Mental Misstep. <laughs> and no dredger, no dredger though. Um, okay, I, I'm still gonna go uh, Astrolabe. I think it's actually important. We got the resolve on the Astrolabe. That's good. So I'm going to go Time Walk now. We're Time Walking. Life total matters a lot less here when we're going for Sphinx. Um, well, I think this is going to get countered, but I'm going to try to brainstorm. I guess I should have filtered, probably. Eh. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. That resolved. So I can't actually balance their bazaars away. So there's really no point in balance. So I guess I can get rid of balance, fetch, and go spell seeker. Does that really get me? I don't see a huge point in playing balance. Um, I think I'd rather just use my mana. I don't know if this gets me Ancestral, I guess. I guess it could get me Surgical Extraction. Okay, it's going to get me nothing. Noted. Uh, this does let me resolve a Tormod's Grip, though. All right, so my opponent's hand is Bizarre, Bizarre, Silver Smoke, Ghoul, Mental Misstep. We should know exactly what their hand is after pitching, I would assume, unless they draw, like, Force. So there's a Bizarre is gone, and then what? And then what? I assume Silver Smoke, Ghoul, and... Okay, no, they actually pitched Mental Misstep. Okay, they drew a Grief. So their just hand is just Bizarre. Okay, well... Uh, I got nothing. So they have no dredgers, but they do have two bazaars, which should power through my crypt pretty quickly. I did draw a surgical extraction, but that is not going to help too much. Uh, I've already used brainstorm, so there's no real reason not to just fetch. Okay. Let's see how my opponent's two bazaars go. We do have a crypt and a surgical to hold this off for a little while. Wait, my opponent. Okay, sure. Sure. All right, let's see what they got. They pitched Force of Will, Force of Will, Bizarre, and then kept the Hollow One. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's basically a nightmare. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we need to draw some action. We drew it to Fairy. To Fairy is action. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't really really paying attention. I think we just want to bounce the Astrolabe. All right. Well, <laughs> I didn't draw any more action. See what happens here. Creeping Chill Amalgam. So still no dredgers, but we are losing on board just a Mana Crypt plus Hollow One. They are just going to go for me, which I think makes sense. Uh, things are bad. Uh, probably just restart your, um, your browser. Refresh. All right. Things are bad. <laughs> I mean... I could have bounced the hollow one, but I didn't think it was good. <sighs> Man. What's graveyard hate for when they have hollow one? Now I'm just dead in mana grip. Hmm. 
Well, this was not a fun time. I, I did I did die to Mana Crypt as well. Okay. Um. The only real choice I could have really changed in this game was bouncing Hollow One. Funnily enough, no, I wouldn't have had blue card for Force, so. I don't know. I had the Surgical and Tormod script, and they just did nothing against my opponent who played Hollow One and, and killed me with it. My opponent did probably make the correct decision to not play Double Bazaar and instead play Hollow One, but... Uh, that is not true. My opponent would have just drawn for turn, activated their Bazaar, and they would have had four cards in hand and replayed Hollow One. So I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. My opponent could just have replayed Hollow One immediately. Uh, I think it was better for me to draw two cards. I just think we did not hit the cards we needed to win the game, which is unfortunate, but... I could have kept balance, but I just didn't think that was the way this game was going to go. It's really hard for my opponent to put creatures in play when I have Tormod script, right? Like, I, my, my opponent didn't have a hollow one until after they activate, you know, after they untapped one more time, right? So, Nift, if opponent puts a hollow one in their hand, that's one card. Draws for turn, that's two cards. Draws two and discards three back down to one card. Replay hollow one. Uh, uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of, I, I think I like the way I play these games. I might, I mean, my deck's just not very good. Okay, here we go now. We are in round four. Uh, unfortunately, this tournament has not gone our way, but we're going to continue battling here. Always going to do the data at the end. I'm going to keep this hand. Uh, if my opponent does end up on Squee, it's obviously not a great hand, but uh, Ancient Tomb, Grim Monolith, so maybe Jewel Shops. This is actually a good hand against Jewel Shops as we have access to Force. Uh, all right. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we obviously have to, you know, fetch before we can use our Brainstorm right now, but that might not be the case in the future. I am going to probably just slam a Brainstorm. It's kind of unfortunate. I probably have to go Tundra. But... Well, you're not supposed to cast Bolas' Citadel. Uh, I am going to cast this now. I do think it's worthwhile. Obviously, we want to hit. That is what I was looking to hit. I actually did not hit additional blue source. So, if I... Can I cast Citadel next turn? So, if I played this is four, five... Yeah, uh, no, I can't cast Citadel next turn. Yeah, we're, we're an Arkham's Astrolabe deck. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to cast Citadel next turn, so I think what we should do is just play Mentor and just try to clock our opponent. Because I'm on turn one. Oh, no, 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 you're right. I have one, two, th yeah, yeah, I have six. So I can, so the problem with playing Citadel is that I'm going to brick immediately. Unless, I uh, I just brick immediately, right? That might still be better than playing Mentor. Uh, yeah, what do you want me to put on top? I guess I can put Mentor on top. Okay, maybe this works. So I need to put Mentor underneath land. Well, I can't put Spellseeker. Putting Spellseeker would be a really big issue, uh, as it's my blue card for Force. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't consider putting Mentor underneath land. That does make sense. So here we go. Uh, if our opponent has Force of Will or, uh, Pact of Negation, we are dead. Uh, but whatever. Not much we can do about that. They didn't have it. That's a good sign. Top. That's a good card here, though. Probably better for them just to... Uh, oh, they're going to go... Okay, sure. 
All right, I do think we still need to get pretty lucky in this game. Um, I do think we still need to get very lucky in this game because we are behind. And our opponent has a ton of looks next turn. But we have a shot. We can actually just hard cast this Citadel, which is not something you can normally do. But we have the Black Lotus, so... All right, let's see what is underneath our Mentor. Teferi is a good one. Uh-huh, okay. Things are going well. Uh, okay, a White Plume Adventure. That's going to shuffle. Okay, things are going well. We have taken a lot of damage. Okay, we don't need another Teferi, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. I would really like a Force on top, maybe. Uh, or a win, like a, a Displacer combo. All right, so we are bricked off now. We could... They conceded. Oh, opponent, don't concede here. <sighs> okay. Um, so we would have to... To ferry... I guess I would bounce Ruby and draw through. And I would hit Pearl. And I would cast Pearl. And then I would cast New to ferry down to six. Arkham down to five. Draw through Ancestral, or cast Ancestral, probably cast Ancestral, drawing uh, down to four, one, two, three, and then with Arkham's on the stack, would we Mystical? Yeah, probably just Mystical for Force. We could plow our Monk too, true, 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 true. Yeah, okay, we, we actually were going to win here. Yeah. Uh, well, the unfortunate part about drawing Time Walk, I, I don't think you should Mystical for Time Walk because you have a, you have an Akram, Ar Arkham's Astrolabe draw trigger on the stack. Um, so you wouldn't be able to Time Walk without drawing it, and then you would have to figure out a way to get blue and white mana. So you probably would not Mystical for Time Walk in that situation. You would Mystical for something else. Uh, but with actually Swords on our Mentor, yeah, I actually do think we would win the game this turn, but I, I mean, it's hard for opponent to know that, but... Uh, do I have an active lab in play? Yeah, you're right. I have a lab in play. So yes, I could get time walk then. True. True, true, true. Uh, so my opponent, I'm going to bring in negation. Uh, am I going to bring in flusterstorm? I don't typically like flusterstorm against their deck. Um, I do like ending. I don't know. I typically don't bring in flusterstorm against jewel shops, but I might here. Just to have more answers. Let me go look for a Jewel Shops deck real quick. I don't have a lot of time though. Because I was talking about the ways we could have won. That's not a Jewel Shops deck. Alright, so I'm going to take out this Planes. And I'm going to take out Swords for at least Negation. Could take out Hercules. The only cards I'm really trying to hit are Force Tinker and Pio. Hmm. It's probably better than these White Plume Adventures, to be honest. I don't really think we need the White Plume Adventures. Take out my combo. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Misstep is still... Misstep is kind of bad, but it's fine. All right, so this definitely doesn't do anything. This is pretty close to a turn one win, right? Uh, if I draw to Teferi, it's a turn one win. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, this is this is lethal with Teferi on turn one. Uh, but I think we need to mulligan to a Force of Will. Okay, we have a Force of Will. I think I'm gonna keep this hand. Even though it has some problems. Like, there's a lot of problems, I should say. But, uh, if I can, like, counter their payoff and, uh, like, ending a, a Mana Crypt, it ends up being pretty good for us.
All right, they could have PO here. Um, so I do think I am going to first draw with Lab and then just ending the crypt. So I think that I think casting Lab is important here. I would also like to find another blue card instead of Narset. Uh, and the reason is because I think Narset is very, very good against their deck. We didn't actually find one. And we, of course, have to use our pedal, but... Uh, mana value, that's less than the number. Okay, yeah, so I am just going to hit this Mana Crypt with this Prismatic Ending. So we'll see if they have PO. I can't really afford... Oh, they have Force. Pitching PO. What? Just cast PO here. Maybe they have second PO. Okay, sure. I would just P I would just play PO. Maybe what they have is force PO and and uh, jewel. That might be what they have. I think I would just cast PO though. Can't get negated on my turn. I think they must have jewel as their last card. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think it makes sense, but. Oh, they drew Saga for turn? That's a nightmare for us. We don't have a lot of uh, action right now. And that Saga is quite good against us. That's a good draw. Okay. Wow, our Astrolabe is going to fix us for Teferi mana, and we can just bounce Saga. That's kind of sweet. Uh, I haven't done that in a long time. Turns out drawing Ancestral confirmed good. Uh, okay. I'm going to hold that in case I draw a Displacer. All right, so they have a Saga. They could draw P.O. here, obviously, is their best draw. Or Tinker is their best draw, and then P.O. is their second best draw. Time Walk is also really good. Uh, okay. So still P.O., Tinker are their best draws. Second Saga is probably a good draw. Um, they drew Tinker. <laughs> okay. My opponent just drew Saga into... Time walk into Tinker. I mean, we still have a good shot in this game if we get to if they pass the turn, which I think it's like not super likely that they will win off of this. Oh no, they drew Po. Okay, I mean, <laughs> sure. Oh, they didn't hold priority. Oh, they have Metamorph. And then P.O.? Damn. I guess... <laughs> I guess this deck never fizzles when it's my opponent. But when I played this deck, and I, met a, I jeweled with three mana open, I lost a lot of games of Magic. Well, they didn't have more action... It's just their action immediately won them the game. <laughs> Whereas our action did not do such a thing. Are they dead? Oh, no, they have an opal. All right, I guess this is bad. Yeah, I think we're pretty much dead here then. Because they're going to get to go metamorph again. Well, they could have no more Moxon. And technically their forces don't do anything, so we could still win. Oh, no. They have another Metamorph. Fair enough. The good thing is if they do fizzle, we do have a... Oh, they, they hit it. They hit a mana, mana source. Oh, they couldn't do the top PO because of Teferi. True. True. We got them, boys. Wait, they're out of blue mana. They're out of blue mana. Never mind. <laughs> this can, uh, oh, they found Teleri and Cat. They had saved their land drop the whole time. Okay, uh, I, I'm willing to concede here. My opponent has killed me. 
Uh, that was unfortunate. That was unfortunate. I think I'm going to bring in the circles as well. I think this mental misstep's not actually that good. Yeah, I mean, we did draw Ancestral, but Ancestral was just not as good. Man, is this a classic, a classic Astrolabe Sapphire hand? Sad, Justin. All right, well... I'm down. I am down. I think we're going to lead with Ponder. Uh, the time walk is better as a pitch card. I was pretty happy with how the second game was going, honestly. We countered their pay. We, we forced them to counter a prismatic ending, and then we countered their payoff. And then they were on top decks and we bounced their saga. The problem was they just top deck tinker and killed us. <laughs> like, I do think that, uh, I do think that, uh, we were in a really strong spot in that last game. Probe. All right. I'm going to take probe, but then I'm going to shuffle these other cards away. If I need a white source, I can get a Tundra on the next one. I'd rather have a this in case I draw an Astrolabe. Drew a Hercules. So that my opponent's hand is Pio, Pio Trinisphere Soaring Negation. Interesting. What if I... Eh. Hmm. Am I going to die to Saga again? I can technically force Soul Ring. The minute I force Soul Ring, they're going to draw Ancient Tomb, though. Whatever. I kind of wanted to draw Teferi there. I am going to Time Walk, I think. Yeah, I'm going to Time Walk. If they want to negate it, then whatever. I did draw the Teferi now. I guess they're going to force this. I force back, and then I bounce their Saga if I want to... I think that's fine. I definitely am resolving this. I guess I could technically could bounce the soul ring back. I think I'm just gonna bounce the saga back. Okay. I mean I have three mana. I don't really care about my opponent playing Trinosphere. So, do I want to cycle my Teferi, or do I want to just end-step Hercules? My opponent can make a construct. That's fine. I'll just end-step Hercules here. If my opponent end-steps uh, a Saga token correctly, we can still bounce it with our second Teferi. So they can float mana here and then make a construct uh, is their best play. I don't know if they'll make that play, but we'll see what happens. They didn't make that play. So what they should do is they should float their mana and then let the Hercules resolve and then make a construct. So now I don't have to play a new Teferi. Um, I think I am going to save it so I can get my card draw. I don't know. Uh, we're looking a little rough here. Oh, I guess they can get a needle off of this. I don't think they're going to get a needle off of this, but yeah. I mean, they could just kill us. This is true. They would have had to draw on a very specific set of stuff here for that to happen. Oh, I guess they drew a very specific set of stuff for that to happen. Because now they have six mana for a jewel. <laughs> All right, well. 
I don't know, man. What do I what do I know? I'm just bad at magic, sure. They're just gonna do <laughs> I don't know. Every time I play against Jewel, I get absolutely destroyed. I guess I should have just played a uh, Teferi and bounced the stupid saga. All right. All right. Uh, I still am winning with a couple things. They have force, of course they have force. Force and pact. Yeah, I guess we just lose. Whatever. Oops. Uh this 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 day has just gone so horribly. It's doomed. It's doomed. Whatever. <laughs> Nothing has gone good for Justin today. Nothing works. I really don't understand how I keep getting absolutely murdered by this deck. But my deck really didn't do anything, so that's probably why. I mean, it's hard to the kitten combo to work if you just don't draw a kitten, so... My opponents have just murdered me over and over again today. It has not been pretty. I could have made a lot of different choices in this game. I still don't think my choices were that bad. But my like I the turn, I mean I guess I should have just um I guess I should have just cycled my Teferi and bounced the saga, right? That was the mistake. I don't know. I feel like that jewel shop stick. Ugh, I just I was so good in game two. I just had to dodge top deck Tinker. I just didn't. I don't know. I'm just feeding today. I really don't think my deck is that bad, but it certainly isn't doing good stuff. I mean, we didn't draw Karn in that matchup. Karn is so good in that matchup. Opponent basically can't beat a Karn. Opponent basically can't beat a Narset. But we never really had the opportunity to play either of those. All right. 